Hello my friend, it is my daily video. I'm Pat Sloan and today I wanna to switch it up a little bit. I'm going to put our topic towards the end of the video because I'm at the point where I think in some of these videos I'm sharing things that we want to search and find again. And so I'm gonna put those things in the front that people are looking for when they're searching for information and then our um, chat part and our topic part will be later in the video for some of them like today so i had a question uh from jane right no wait a second we're gonna do rebecca's i had a question from rebecca she said that um she wanted to know what my design process is i'm reading this here do i keep a list of ideas uh how do i develop blocks uh, she said she really loved the blocks i'm doing for a cozy thing which is our wednesday so along and she was do i have a sketchbook graph paper computer um you know and and she loves that it feels like i come into her house so like Hey, Rebecca, this is a great question. When she asked me this in the Facebook group, I said, I'll talk about it today. Um, it's a, because I do these videos right through, I'm not photo, I'm not editing. I'm not doing any editing of these videos. So they're just like you stopped at my house and we're talking, there's no editing going on. So I have to sort of gather everything up and cobble together things so that I can talk about stuff without doing pop-ins and fancy things this is just real conversation just you and i so how do i design i started out always on the computer my degrees in computer science i spent 20 years in software development so i am a computer geek i love to use my computer and i use it and have used it since i was 17 years old i've been on computers um which there weren't many computers when you were 17. They were had they were big. They weren't like something you carried around in your pocket. They were in that building. <laughs> so <laughs> that that is what I did. I did computers until I quit that career after 20 years and uh, started my business. So that being said, immediately we got software. We got design software. Now, I think Electric Quilt, which you commonly hear called EQ, Electric Quilt, uh, may have not been out when I started. And if it was, it was really in its infancy. It did not have any features to do applique, which I do. So I had to buy uh, uh, industry software you know this is graphic artist software so I brought up a screen I took a picture of my uh, my big computer this is all used on my desktop I don't use it on a phone or a tablet but I took a picture of it and I show I'll show it to you on my tablet so this is what the screen looks like there we go let me see if I can get it there without the glare so this is basically a blank slate it's almost like opening a piece of paper so I have a worksheet when I pick which size everything has to be decided by me like all the sizes of the paper all the line sizes all the colors everything so I'm going to show you another picture this is sort of how I started and this is a sheet of paper that is what I produced the PDF on the final pattern not the full size I actually draw quilts in here full size where I lay out a big piece of paper that's 100 by 100 inches so just like the size of a quilt and then I build the quilt full size this is the one that's the size of a piece of paper eight and a half by eleven so I'm going to show you a second page that I did a screenshot of. So here is where I'm just drawing a rectangle or a box. So you know that is what I have to draw. So I have controls over on this side. I have a lot of controls. And then I have other controls over on this side. And there's also a control bar on the top. There are tons and tons of controls and you can do everything to the tiniest minutia of detail. Uh, so I'll show you one last one, which is our Cozy Things PDF. I have to build every single diagram, every half square triangle, every rectangle. I have to draw it all out. And then uh, here is what the project looks like as I'm working on it. So you can see the, whoops, ah, hold on. Let me get it back up. There we go. So you can see the block uh, over here there and then in the middle is where I'm writing so it's like I have a work tablet I have work surface on either side of the piece of paper uh, and the piece of paper that has all of the text every single one of those boxes I have to place where I want to place it nothing nothing zero is automated this is all very manual 
Uh, it's as if I were drawing and typing it out myself, you know, on a typewriter or something, you know, old school. But um, you know, I have to draw every line. I have to type everything. I have to place everything. I have to decide all of the fonts. There's no templates. Everything is done. Now I, over time, because I know how to do this, I build my own templates. So I know that I can call it up and my basically my PDFs will look pretty much the same anymore. The front, the tops and the bottoms are all there. Those are called templates so that you just put things in the middle. Nowadays there's all kinds of other software. This is like my, it's at least my second software since I've been in business, design software. 20 years, um, 21 years, I know well, about 23 years I've been designing on software and I've gone through two uh, different software packages. Both of them are out of print. The first one was out of print and it was so out of print, like the, you know, the company had been bought up, it was totally gone and disappeared. Uh, and then Greg found this other software that was very similar the drawing graphic softwares work differently than each other so there's different ways and and like if you go into electric quilt it works totally different than this it, it may look a little bit the same but there's a lot of automation in there a lot of pre-built blocks this is none of that i have to draw every single block myself so that is a peek at what that looks like how do i how do i start uh, as a designer, um, I sometimes start with sketches. So I might take just a regular note notebook, nothing fancy, uh, and I just will, you know, draw out maybe a design like that. So I draw things out and what where it might go. Uh, another time I might, because mine all have a, a lot of words and themes that go with it. I have stories, so I might do something like this where I sort of plot out what the items are and then I go to the computer but I do very little on paper anymore even for like the cozy time I mostly am typing out and not on paper like this I do it all on the computer now I type in there what the theme is and what all the topics will be for each of the weeks and then uh, I write the stories in there that you see within the pattern so that's all done on the computer I rarely sketch by hand anymore sometimes just a little bit but not not very much uh, so but in the beginning I did I, I did much more on the sketching on the on the paper and these notebooks and I keep them but you know <laughs> to rarely go back and look at them actually it's been a long time since i pulled one out i was like oh, okay i'll just pull this one out and see see what i don't even know i'm sure in there somewhere i may have written the year i don't even know what year that is um, now the other thing i use are traditional blocks and then i will change them often like i might start with a traditional block like you see the star for this week in cozy things well then i added to the star so i added a piece inside that block with the little little blocks um, the cozy things block one those are squares and half square triangles i basically was working with a big square and wanted to see what could i do and what could i mess around with what could i put in what could i take out it's all a form of playing so there are lots of great books of traditional blocks there are websites online with traditional blocks one of my favorites which you're going to hear a bit about again i think on friday in a bit more detail i'll bring this up again but the encyclopedia of quilt blocks by Barbara Brackman is like the Bible. So I'm going to talk about that again though because there's come, they're coming out with a new release and I did a little blurb for them. So I will, I, you'll have to wait. You have to wait a little bit more. That'll be another couple of days maybe. What is it, Friday's tomorrow. Okay, I said Friday, it might be next Friday. We'll see. <laughs> It'll be a surprise what day. <laughs> oh, goodness. So I wanted to show you some of the quilts. Um, let me first do our topic. That would be good, right? Okay, so let's do the topic first. Um, <laughs> so the topic got inspired today. Our topic is class time. And it is inspired by another question. So this is fabulous. Over on, I, I, I try to read through the questions here at YouTube. I try to see what you're asking. There's a lot of you and a lot of you ask things, so I miss stuff. But you can always ask again uh, or tag my name. So anyways, <laughs> Anne asked, um, first she says, wishing you a speedy recovery. So she asked, that's very sweet. Thank you. I'm, I'm moving along. So my question is, if you were to change roles and be a student in a class, quilting class 
What would you be interested in learning about? Something just for yourself to make and not necessarily for business. Okay, in a quilting class, okay, so I'm gonna answer it differently, Anne, because basically I'm not interested in taking a quilting class right now. You know, quilting is my business, and if I'm going to take the time away to do a class, I wanna do something else. I'm not, you know, I wanna learn something else. I've learned a lot about quilting, and I've taken a lot of quilting classes. Uh, so right now there isn't something that interests me to take from somebody else. I can pretty much pick it up on my own, whatever I'm looking at, or ask a buddy who does it. Um, but for me personally, I would like to take some workshops on gardening, some gardening ones, because it's been a long time since I've been able to really do any gardening. I would not would love to take some on some different types of cooking, like particularly bread making. Um, that would be really interesting to me. Uh, there was a place doing some classes that isn't near here, I maybe mean, like an hour or so away, and it just never fit in my, in my schedule to take that much time to go, you know, a whole day to go take a class. Um, I have taken some mixed media in the past, but I'm really not interested in that stuff. I'm more interested in the gardening and the, the cooking stuff. Um, those are things that I would go and take a class for right now. And I also am really specific. Uh, I find, I don't know how you are with your learning, but for me right now, I like, okay, I wanna know exactly how to make sourdough bread. Uh, so that would be the type of class I want to take something very specific. If it's gardening, I really want to do a landscaping. You know, what is, uh, and, and yard landscaping, you know, like very, like my yard. <laughs> How do we landscape my yard? <laughs> so those are the things I'm interested in. <laughs> All right. I'm gonna show you the quilt on the wall in a second, but I wanna re tell you that these came back in stock. Yes, my thread kits uh, with Aurifil. So there are my perfect box of neutrals. It's got all these wonderful shades. Uh, I'm going to do a little talk about thread. There's another question that's coming up, so I'm going to do that on another day about using the thread colors on your quilt, you know, what, what works, what doesn't work, so that'll come in another day or so. So Miss Barbie, I got her done. This is the last of the three that came back for my great niece, my first niece's daughter, and I want to get this to her before she doesn't play with Barbies anymore. <laughs> You know, like that, that one day where they're like, okay, I'm done with Barbies. They're like, no, no, not yet. We're going to have you in the quilt. So I was telling Cindy who I was giving it to. And I also mentioned to Cindy that um, she has a new kitty. My niece has a new kitty. And so Cindy's like, we've got kitty. We've got a kitty uh, pan panogram. Is that a pantograph? Yeah, pantograph. So there it is, the kitties. And I thought that would be cute because, you know, this is for a little girl. Uh, and a little girl who just got a kitty and you know I know when I was little and I got my hamster it was the most amazing wonderful thing to get a hamster my hamster was named Janice <laughs> and I just I loved her the second hamster was named Sam <laughs> my, my animals all have real people names uh, so Amelia will be getting uh, the Barbie quilt Shh, don't tell her Shh, don't tell her but and I'm going to think I'm going to send her mom, my, my niece Sharon, the snowflake quilt. Not the pink one. I'm keeping that one. The other one. I'm going to think I'm going to send that one out to her uh, along with a few other things I have. And, and so I've got to put the binding on that one. But I thought when so I told Cindy that and she said kitties, I'm like, yes, yes, yes. You've got to put kitties on there. So the little girl will have it for her and her kitty. All right, my friend. So what class would you take? That's the topic to, for today. What class would you take if you could take anything? And it doesn't have to be quilting. I'd like to know, tell me below. All the other links are down there too, including where to get my thread back. I love you, Mwah. see you online.